We're going to build a music circuit with six inverters packaged in this uh, 4000 series CMOS chip, the 4069. Powered like many chips of this era, with pin 7 being ground and the positive supply is on pin 14 and the pins are numbered anti-clockwise 1 through 7 and 8 through 14. So this is uh, sold as a digital chip but we're going to use it as a uh, analog chip so rather than having its inputs and outputs sit at the rails, the ground and power rail, we're going to uh, set these inverters up to um, move around the center between the rails. So to do that, we're going to use feedback between the input and the output. So this first one connects the output directly to the input and uh, those two pins will now be at roughly half the power supply. And um, another way to establish that um, the inverters work in their linear regime halfway between the rails is to force the output to that point. And we're going to do that through a loudspeaker, which has a relatively low resistance and impedance. So the loudspeaker goes between that. Output and input shorted together and the output of the next inverter in line. And that means the input of that inverter is now available as a source of um, as, uh, to listen to our sources our signals around the circuit through the loudspeaker. Um, so let's test that. It's good to test as you go. Uh, here we go. We've turned it on. And uh, we don't have a source of input because we haven't built our oscillator yet. But we can use my finger here. And uh, hear the 60 hertz. Actually, if I ground the 60 hertz go away, it goes away, but my finger is providing a nice collector of 60 hertz. So we know that circuit works. So now we're going to take some of the inverters on the other side of the chip and use a capacitor to connect the input and the output to form an integrator. And uh, we're going to connect a resistor, a variable resistor, from the input to that integrator. And the output of the next free inverter, which is right there. And uh, that integrator is going to collect charge that we send down the that resistor and accumulate it and produce a ramp. So the trick to make an oscillator is to reverse the direction of that ramp uh, before we hit the rails. And we're going to do that with by putting two amplifiers in a row, two of these inverting amplifiers in a row. So the output on pin 2 goes to the input of the next one on pin 3 like that and uh, we'll use two resistors to control that's a kind of analog to digital converter we've made because we're going to have these analog ramps go inside but the output of those two inverters in a row is going to either be uh, 
9 volts or ground. We're making a device called a Schmidt trigger for which we need a resistor from this input and the output and the input to the Schmidt trigger is established with a 100k so we have a 330k resistor around the feedback of those two amplifiers and a 100k which is going to collect its input from the output of the integrator which is right there and uh, we can hear already that we have an oscillation and there's a square wave there uh, changing the frequency and out here is a triangle wave much quieter because it doesn't go between the rails it goes between the thresholds established by the Schmidt trigger Now, it turns out I've used a rather special, hard to find, speaker for this. It's a 100 ohm impedance speaker. Uh, if you can't find one of those, and if you want to control this um, circuit and have a louder output, I recommend using a step-down transformer instead. And my handy uh, prototyping environment here has the transformer here hooked up to the speaker you're listening to. And you can hear it's much louder. allows us to use an A-tone speaker that you can easily find. So we have one free inverter we haven't used yet at the top of the package on the right um, so one of the goals we might pursue is that's how loud the square wave is let's try to amplify that uh, triangle wave to get a similar amplitude so we're going to set this last inverter up as a inverting amplifier, linear amplifier, by connecting a 100k potentiometer between its input and its output. And we want to amplify the triangle wave from here, so we're using a resistor to drive current into the input of our amplifier. And we'll put the power on. and change from the original loudness that we hear there we're going to connect it to the output of our linear amplifier which is there and by varying the potentiometer we can attenuate to it's barely audible it go as loud as we like at some point we start saturating you can hear the distortion coming in around there Now, the basic principle of these inverting amplifiers with the feedback is that um, they adjust their outputs to try and maintain um, an input value that's very close to the half rail. Since that's a constant value at the input of our amplifier, 
uh, we can add as many signals as we want with that amplifier and it becomes a mixing amplifier just by adding resistors. So that uh, 10k uh, drives a certain amount of current in there and for the square wave which is already louder we want to put less current in so we'll use a bigger resistor by a factor of about four or five. So here's a 47k resistor going into the summing node of that converting amplifier which is on pin 13 and then we're going to pick up the square wave out here on pin 4. Let's take the square wave out so we can hear the effect of the mixture. Take the triangle wave out, so we can just hear the square wave. Interestingly, there's a pitch change when we load the output of the integrator. Well, as a timbre change. Well, we've gone to the trouble of building a relaxation oscillator with the Schmidt trigger and the triangle wave, and that gives us a square wave for free. So um, it's interesting to consider the other um, favorite waveform for music synthesis, which is the sawtooth. And we need a sawtooth because sawtooth has harmonics. Um, both odd and even, whereas the square wave and the triangle wave only have odd harmonics. So let's turn it on so we can hear those um, odd harmonics and add the even harmonics in. What we're going to do is we're going to put a diode across the um, integration resistor Sawtooth back to our mixed square and triangle wave. Let's compare, let's remove the square wave and compare the triangle wave with the sawtooth. 